Well, folks, another week, another car. <laughs> Not quite another week, but I have changed my car yet again. As you can see, it is something quite different to a Maserati. I still have a lot of love for the Maserati, but I decided to move on from it. To briefly touch on why, I've had three of them now, as some of you know, three Quattro Portes. Two of them were facelifts, like the last dark green one was. And between the three, I've owned them for around a year. And I feel like the car doesn't really you know, bring anything new to the table at that point. I know what I'm getting. I know what's great about the car. I know what it's like to live with. And I fancy to change. Uh, as some of you already know as well, I already have a classic. I've got a Lincoln, a 1968 Lincoln Continental, which I call Abe. There's some videos about him on the channel and uh, you know, exhaust mods and stuff. Doing a Holy Sniper conversion to it, etc. Absolutely love it. It's my favourite car I've ever had. And I had this idea in the back of my mind to get another classic. You know, just have a classic as a daily and a classic as a show car. Obviously, I recently purchased the classic bike as well, a 1953 MV Augusta. And now this time, as some of you can, or as all of you can see, this is something considerably bigger than uh, most of the other cars I've had. This is actually my first wagon, full-on station wagon, not just in the state car like we'd have here in the UK. And it is, as you shall see now from the walk around, a Ford Country Squire. Pretty famous for those of you who have played Forza. I believe it was originally a DLC car, I think. I want to say in like Forza 4 or something. Uh, probably pretty well known, maybe best known from the Horizon games. And yeah, it's, it's like a huge woody wagon. This one doesn't have the wood on it. I think there are a couple of different variations of the Country Squire. I'm not too versed on them because I'm pretty sure the one in the game has, I think it's a 427. It's like a 7 litre engine, I think. This one's no way near that, which is fine by me. This is actually a 289 block, so it's a 4.7 V8. Only about 200 horsepower. I don't recall what the torque is. I'll put it up on screen. Um, but yeah, it's it's more than quick enough for a daily. It sounds great, as you'll have heard. For those who, cu who are curious, I am definitely going to mod the exhaust on this one as well. I'm going to take the boxes off. I was planning on taking them off myself, but for some weird reason, the boxes aren't in the back. They're like around the midsection. So I need to look at a diagram because I'm not sure if this had resonators and boxes and maybe the boxes have already been taken off and it's just got the resonators. But whatever the case may be, I'm taking those off just like I did with Abe. So this is going to sound fantastic as well. But yeah, in terms of a walk around, this has two key advantages over Abe in terms of being a daily. One of them I won't need that often, but it has 10 seats. So three in the front, three behind, and I'll show you the four extra ones in the boot as well, which is pretty awesome because sometimes I do like to go on road trips to the beach and stuff, pick up my nephews and sister, etc. So you can quite easily get all of us in the car. I mean, you, you could get most of us in Abe anyway with six seats, but this one even more so. Uh, the space in the back is fantastic. This definitely has the most boot space of anything I've had, even including the Touareg. And the second huge advantage, obviously as a daily, is fuel because Abe is a 462 V8, a 7.6 litre, and on the motorway, Abe will get about maybe 51p a mile economy, it's like, I don't know, 12 to the gallon or something, and it averages more like 7 to the gallon. This, I bought from Sheffield, drove it about 200 miles home, and it costs me less than 68 pounds, which is how much fuel I put in to do that. So this is like 34 pence at 60 miles an hour on the motorway. So, so much more affordable than Abe, and like between 21 and 22 miles per gallon, I averaged, which is, I think, really impressive. For a car like this to be doing 21, I mean, even even close to 20 to the gallon is amazing, in my opinion, for a classic American, um, especially with Abe being like a pound a mile around town, seven to the gallon. But yeah, it's, it's fantastic as a daily. I'm absolutely loving it. This one is still running the original Carburetta setup, Obviously, three-speed auto on the tree, just like Abe. I never considered myself to be a Ford guy, but I guess I am, because this is a Ford, and technically the Lincoln is as well. They're both, you know, Ford uh, company. But yeah, I absolutely love them. It's got a couple of things that have been done or semi-done. It looks to have been reupholstered at some point. Obviously, the paint's been done. There's loads of stickers on it. I'm going to take the stickers off and put my own ones on. Um, what else? We've got a temperature gauge, which I believe is an addition. It does have some speakers wired up, but they're not fully integrated. So, I mean, I don't really care about that. Um, these door panels have been, uh, or not the panels, but the, the armrests have been changed. Again, you'll see it from the walk around to, to be like wooden surfboards, which is cool. And it, this definitely has more of the surfer dude aesthetic compared to Abe, which is one of the reasons why I liked it. I wanted another American classic that gives me the things that I love about Abe, but without cramping Abe's style. 
And just like how I named Abe, this car has to have a name as well. So when I refer to it in future on the channel, I narrowed it down to a few names. The car has kind of a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, maybe a bit of Hills Have Eyes, maybe a bit of Texas Chainsaw, a bit of Doom, maybe all of this going on with the visuals and with the patina. So I wanted it to be like a southern redneck kind of name. I narrowed it down to a few, and ultimately between me and my girlfriend, I gave her a couple of options. She ultimately did the deciding factor. And so the Lincoln is Abe, for obvious reasons. I've decided to name this one Bo. So this car is Bo, the Squire. And uh, like I said, I'm not fully versed on Squires. I believe this is a Galaxy Country Squire, but I think they were based on a couple of different models with, it seems like, kind of interchangeable names. So, uh, yeah. But ultimately, it also has wind-down windows all round, aside from that back one, which is electric. And I love that as well, because the only issue with Abe, really, is the electric windows haven't aged that well. But in this one, wind-down windows all day, I love it. It's more of a quirk these days, because all cars are electric windows. But yeah, uh, obviously the space is fantastic. This rear bench folds down, so the boot space is insane. I can quite easily fully lay out in this car. As insane as it is, though, especially with the walk-around, this is still smaller than the Lincoln. The Lincoln is a two-door coupe, and it's still a full foot longer than this. That's insane. Thir around, or maybe even more than 30 centimeters longer than this car, which is bonkers for a 10-seater. It shows just how massive the Lincoln is. Height-wise, they're about the same. The width is pretty much exactly the same. And in fact, these cars are not as wide as you might think. These are about the same width as an Audi A8. So. Not bad. You know, in terms of parking spaces, it's not bad at all. The back end on the Lincoln is always hanging out of parking spaces. This one, it's actually not so bad. It takes up a similar amount of space to like a, a pickup or like a big Ford Transit van over here in the UK. But yeah, it's not too bad. It looks a lot bigger because of the TARDIS effect of how much space there is. Whereas with Abe, the cabin ends kind of somewhere here and then the rest is all the boot. So yeah, I absolutely adore this thing. The insurance on this was like £400 for the year. Uh, and that's up to 12,000 miles. Obviously it's tax exempt, MOT exempt. So this is the first time I've ever had all three of my vehicles are classics. So I pay no road tax, no MOTs, and between all three, the 7.6 litre Lincoln, 4.7 Ford, and the 175 MV Augusta, between all three, I'm paying 800 a year, 900 insurance for all three of them together, which I think is pretty damn good. <laughs> So yeah, I'll uh, obviously show you around the car, as you'll see in the video, and there will definitely be at least an exhaust video. I think I'm going to get it professionally done, cut out the boxes, replace them with a stainless section, get it done by a garage instead of trying to do it myself. And uh, yeah, aside from that, not really planning to do much else. Stickers, it's already got some really nice uh, American racing wheels. Oh, and one other thing which I probably will do, it's got drum brakes front and rear and of course I am going to do a, a more conventional review for this in beards and cars so stick around for that just like I did with the Lincoln and I will say that the drums definitely feel more its age I'm not going to get into too much of how it drives in this video because this is just more like the, the the fun part and then we'll do that in the review but yeah the, the drum brakes have definitely aged about as well as you'd think for a 1966 car Abe's brakes are incredible it had discs on the front from the factory so I might convert this to discs on the front because it's not that expensive to do and the difference is massive and it's amazing how lost in the engine bay a 4.7 looks because by british standards i mean that's significantly bigger than the maserati was that was a 4.2 nowhere near as quick obviously but physically bigger and yet under that bonnet it just look it's such a tiny engine it looks lost in there but yeah it's it's an awesome car i absolutely love it i love the contrast between how good the interior is and how good the upholstery is with how run down you know deliberately patined the outside is uh abe originally came from uh, near chicago rockport i think it was about 90 miles from chicago this one comes from birmingham alabama so appropriate for the again like redneck kind of image and uh yeah yeah, so that's the announcement vid. Stick around, of course, in the next few days for the Beards and Cars review. And ultimately, I couldn't be happier. I absolutely love this thing. One, one of the things you might be wondering is, why am I just getting classics? You know, why would you get rid of a Maserati for something like this? Well, it's because the more I drive, the more I realize I could not care less how fast a car is in my daily life. The cars that make me the happiest are never the fastest. The quickest car I've ever had was a Bentley Flying Spur. 200 mile an hour car. It was fun. I never use it. The Maserati, 
fast when you need it. I never use it. I just cruise. That's all I'm interested in. I couldn't care less about drag racing, pulls, track days. It's just not my vibe. I mean, even my motorbike only tops out 60 miles an hour. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's it for the announcement vid. And of course, stick around for the exhaust work, which will hopefully be fairly soon, depending on when I can get an appointment. And aside from that, yeah, just the the Beards and Cars review, I guess, if you want to hear more about the car. But if you haven't checked out my Lincoln already to, to see Abe, and Abe is a magnificent car as well, then absolutely check those out. I would recommend watching my Holly Sniper conversion video for that one to see the kind of difference that made to the car. I might do a Holly Sniper conversion on this, but I will say this car runs a lot sweeter than the Lincoln used to. The Lincoln would really struggle on the carburetor. This one, nowhere near as much. And I think it's because it's a 4.7. It's got so much less engine to feed with fuel that it seems to cope really well. And it's not slow. You know, it's not a performance car, but it's not slow. It keeps up the traffic easy. I do like, you know, 55, 60 on the motorway anyway. And yeah, it's, it's just really, really nice. It's comfortable, not quite as comfortable as Abe, definitely not as advanced as Abe. No, we need, it doesn't even have seat belts, whereas Abe does. I may get some lap belts installed, it's got the bolts for it. But yeah, I absolutely love it. And the thing about classics as well is now that I've got it, I don't see me changing this anytime soon. So yeah, thanks for dropping by and checking out my Forza car, <laughs> in effect. And of course, stick around for that as well. But until next time, I'll see you then. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.